Hi, thanks so much for joining us today to look at a tutorial video on how to use a step-by-step -step visual model checklist to help students with word problems. My name's Shannon from SIS, the number four teachers.org, and we're gonna be showing you how to do an additive comparison bar with first grade students. It's really important that students have gone through this in a developmentally appropriate way and are feeling comfortable with part whole addition, part whole subtraction, as well as part whole missing add-in before we bring in the complexity to additive comparisons. And our story problem today will be using a step-by-step -step checklist. We'll also be showing it in two different ways. One, in a proportional model, where we kind of might start at the beginning of the year. And then throughout the year, we'll move on to having students use this in a non-proportional way, where we won't have the individual units, which will help prepare them as they start to get into second grade using higher numbers that we can't possibly do proportionally. Let's take a look at our step-by-step -step checklist to see the seven steps that we want first graders to be able to go through as they go through this process. The first step is to read the entire problem and put in chunks when new pieces of mathematical information is comes about. So we're going to start off first by reading the whole problem and then we're going to go through slowly and stop when we see new pieces of math information. So we're going to read our problem in total here. Maya has four crayons and Mackenzie has nine crayons. How many more crayons does Mackenzie have than Maya? One problem with first graders is they saw two numbers and they are going to add or subtract or look at you and try to figure out what they should do. When in reality, that's not what this type of problem is asking. That's why it's not in the part whole family and is a little bit more complex and is really the whole reason why we start doing visual models because once you get out of the part whole family, this becomes a little bit more difficult. We're going to go back and do our reread repeat using our chunk. Maya has four crayons. Your kids would repeat it. They get really excited about saying chunk because there's a new piece of information that they have there. And Mackenzie has nine crayons. They would repeat that. Mackenzie has nine crayons and then do a chunk. How many more crayons does Mackenzie have than Maya? They would repeat that in chunk. This problem has three pieces of information on it in the chunks. We want to later put checks on those as we enter it into our visual model. Let's go back to our checklist and we can put a check off. It's important with first graders, even though they might not be able to read all these parts, that you're not owning the step-by-step -step checklist, that you're collaboratively doing that together with your students. Step two says to rewrite the question in sentence form with a blank space for the answer. If we go back to the journal here, we do have this really scaffolded for the beginning of the year where it says Mackenzie has hmm, more crayons than Maya. We could later maybe put a blank for Mackenzie and let kids use that to help them. We also could put in for Maya or crayons. The idea of the sentence form is to really ask students, what are we solving for? Again, sometimes kids don't want to pay attention to anything besides that nine and four, and they're going to come up with different ways to solve. We're not solving until step six, and we're only on step two. This sentence form really helps bring clarity to say what it is we're exactly we're solving for. We leave the blank space there so that the kids know that, that answer at the end has to go in there. Going back to our checklist, we're going to go ahead and put the check on there, saying that we've rewritten that in a question, in a sentence form, and we have that ready to go. The next part says determine the who or the what. Let's go back and take a look at this to see we've already written in that this bar is representing Maya's crayons, this bar is representing Mackenzie's crayons. Down the line, we could kind of leave these names and maybe leave the, the character's name or the person's name or the what blank and let kids begin to learn throughout the school year that they can put in that who and what on their own. Let's go back to the checklist and we're going to go ahead and check that off. When it comes to step four, especially in additive comparison, my motto is always to go slow and then it'll go fast. So when we're looking at the unit bars in this, it's a comparison and many kids get tripped up in the language of what's being asked. So if we come back over here, I'm gonna kind of show this example using snap cubes or even unifix cubes. I might have kids first just build their models with a visual model with using these cubes. So my red cubes are going to represent how many crayons that Maya has. I have here the blue cubes that are counted out to represent the nine that Mackenzie has. This is considered an additive comparison. It's not asking 
asking how many they have all together. It's not asking if Mackenzie had nine, if someone she gave away four. It's actually comparing. So when we look at comparing, we really need to show this with a visual model for kids to do this. I do a lot of problems before I would get to the pencil paper with the concrete tools. So what does it mean when it asks how many more does Mackenzie have? Well, let's make us have an equal amount there that's the same, this is how many more that she has. So helping kids understand the language first, the unifix cubes is really great. And knowing that the question mark is really being asked here in this empty space, it wants to know how many more. Once kids have an understanding for how to do this with manipulatives, you can bring them then back into this proportional bar that we have here. And so on here, we have this represented. Some people might think it's easy to enter the information on here. But at the end of the day, we're really working on the comprehension for what's happening. So we'll go back to our checklist in this case, and we're going to go ahead and put um, a check there. If we go back now in step five, it's kind of a lofty step for them to look at the chunks, put in the checks, and then add the different parts to the adjusted bar and put in the question mark. When we go back and look at this, we don't want kids to solve on the visual model. The visual model is a representation, meaning if I could cover up these words, I should be able to look at this visual model and someone should be able to know the story problem that I was being asked. Because here we have the visual model and we already say these represent Maya's crayons, you don't necessarily have to put anything in there, but just to kind of show that I'm double checking to make sure my boxes match, there are Maya's for crayons. I'm gonna go ahead and put a check above this, the bracket or sort of this chunk that we had to show that's already in there. Nothing needs to be written above in here because in the comparison bars, we're comparing their two crayons. Mackenzie has nine crayons, so I like to kind of differ the shape sometimes with kids to see that this child here you know, has nine crayons. I double checked that I have nine. I'm gonna go ahead and put the question mark. The question is asking how many more crayons does Mackenzie have in Maya than Maya? We're not looking for the answer here, we're looking for the question mark because again, this is showing what the problem is asking. So it's asking how many more, I have that over there on the how many more. If I brought this in in a non-proportional bar, we have the information here, I'm not going to put in you know, the lines on here, but I'm gonna just go ahead and represent that Maya has four crayons, you know, you still kind of have these chunks. So it'd be a great scaffold for first graders after they understand additive comparison bars and they're ready to move to this level. And we know that this bar here is representing nine. The question mark is really being in this blank space looking to see how many more um, Mackenzie has than Maya. So same process, I'm just showing this in the non-proportional. Once kids get to second grade, they have to build these all on their own as problems are going to become more complex. So we're trying to create a really good foundation for kids. Let's go back over to our checklist now on step five. I'm gonna go ahead and check off that we now have the chunks in our story problem. It's now time for us to correctly compute the answer. And so we're going to go to the bottom box here and compute this. Students can obviously look up here and count, but we're looking for a number sentence that they might use. It might be, you know, that Mackenzie has nine, and when I take away that equal amount, that Maya has, I might subtract the four to come up with five. Um, kids can show their problems in different ways. You know, they might say, you know, Maya has four and Mackenzie has four, but then Mackenzie has an additional five to get to her nine. Um, so they would look at that answer there. Lots of different ways kids can draw, do any kind of way they want to show the computation in the computation box there. If we go back to the checklist, we've now correctly computed and solved the problems. Kids can do that with manipulatives as problems get harder, but they certainly can look at that visual model to aid them as they create their algorithm. The last part is to write the answer in the sentence and make sure the answer makes sense. A lot of kids end up doing a story problem and they're on their way, but they're not really answering what the problem really asked. It wants to know how many more crayons did Mackenzie have? We indeed have figured out that there are five more crayons that Mackenzie has than Maya, which completes our answer. Kids here can go back to that checklist, the last part, and go ahead and check off that part of it. It's really important with additive comparison problems to really use the manipulatives, whether you're using the um, Unifix cubes or even Cuisinier rods to help kids understand the part that you're talking about because 
additive comparison problems are going to get more complex as they get older and they'll start to do something called multiplicative comparison problems. So this will give a great foundation for kids that are needing this. And this is probably the most complex type of problem that will be taught in the first grade. We hope that you'll connect with us on our website at sas the number four teachers.org. You also can join us on any of the social media channels that are pictured there with the same handle at sas the number four teachers. Thanks so much for joining us.